Well, Creality is back with another major update to Creality Print, introducing some cool new features for Creality Print 6. To start off, we have improved slicing speeds. Now they did improve this on Creality Print 5, but it's good to see they're still making progress to make it faster every single time. This is a nice improvement as there's nothing more boring than having to wait for your model to finish slicing. There's also a new home interface that connects directly to Creality Cloud, allowing you to find a 3D model, download it, slice it, and print it all within the slicer. They've since added 100 new third-party printers, along with optimized corresponding filament and process parameters. So if any of your printers are on the list, now you don't have to manage your 3D printing workflow around multiple slices. Crowley Print 6 now has built-in connection to Fluid and Mainsail, so you can keep everything in one browser instead of needing to switch between different programs. They've improved on the workflow by implementing a new tab called Configuration Relationship Manager. This essentially allows you to copy your filament presets and profiles from one printer to another without having to do it all manually. For those of you who enjoy making print-in-place objects, Crowley Print 6 now has a new ZC mode called Assemble. It essentially adds a clearance zone of 2mm around the Z-seam points to prevent overlap and ensure proper model functionality. There's nothing worse than spending half a roll of filament and wasting hours of your life on a print-in-place object only to try and use it and it doesn't work. Almost works. In this photo, the Z-seam is set to aligned, and you can see that the Z-seams overlap each other and potentially will fuse when they are printed. When placed on assemble, the Z-seams are all moved away from each other to ensure your model moves freely. Another cool feature is called Smart Cooling Zones. This feature analyzes the geometry of a model and automatically disables cooling slowdowns for layers where it isn't really necessary, significantly reducing printing time while maintaining quality. There's a new setting called Overhang Optimization, which automatically identifies overhang areas and adjusts layer heights and line width for improved print quality. This feature is enabled with a single click, delivering optimal overhang performance every time. So as you can see, the model on the right has it turned on, the one on the left has it turned off. You can see that the layer lines get thinner as the angle gets steeper, and on the underside, as there's more for the print to stick to, the blue area completely disappears, meaning you should get far less sagging than before. But there's only one way to find out for sure, so let's have a look at some test prints. I just printed a basic overhang test at 150 millimeters per second. As you can see, the overhangs are starting to droop, but the overall finish of the top part of the model looks quite nice. So now that we have our baseline, I decided to print out the same model, but with overhang optimization enabled. So this is with overhang optimization enabled. You can see that the layer lines have started to get very thin around here. And on the back, you can see that that sagging is mostly gone. When compared to the original, I think it did its job quite well. But the only thing that I don't like about it is that it kind of creates a bit of inconsistency in that top layer, which depending on what you're using it for, could be an issue. In this one, I disabled overhang optimization and enabled smart cooling to see how that would go. So you can see that this top finish is looking much more consistent because the ley lines aren't changing in size. And I would say that the drooping has improved a little bit in comparison to the baseline test. But it got me thinking, what would happen if I enabled both overhang optimization and smart cooling for the same model? So let's check that out. So this version has overhang optimization enabled and smart cooling. So you can see that it's doing its job around the tough areas, trying to increase the surface area by making the layer lines smaller. And on the back, it looks pretty good. There's no drooping whatsoever. So when compared to the original one with none of the settings applied, you can see that it has done a pretty good job. Now you won't need to use any of these settings if you just print slowly. So here is a model that I printed at 40 millimeters per second and you can see that there is zero sagging and, and all the overhangs look pretty damn good. But if you're in a pinch for time and you need to pump out these parts, then I think enabling overhang optimization and smart cooling could be a good option. Let's talk about orientation. Previously, you had to manually adjust model orientation to reduce print time or support usage, often with suboptimal results because sometimes you go too far left or right or up and down. The new auto orientation feature uses algorithms to optimize either print time or support volume with a single click. This is especially helpful to people that aren't really sure how to orient it properly, so you can leave it to the program to do it for you. So here's the print time and filament usage of an object prior to automatically orienting it. When I select minimize support volume, 
The material usage changes from 7.8 grams to 5.8 grams. When I select minimize print time, it changes from 21 minutes and 55 seconds to 17 minutes and 52 seconds. I found that it didn't work on all models, so make sure you compare the before and after to see if this is gonna work for you. Otherwise, you'll just have to do it manually. I have a video link below on how to orient your 3D models, so check that out if you need some help. There's a new infill pattern called TPMS-D cell. Sounds like a battery. But apparently this saves on filament and reduces print time due to its advanced geometric design when compared to traditional infill patterns like grid or crosshatch. When using the grid infill, this model takes 1 hour and 43 minutes and uses 68.71 grams of filament. When using TPMS, the model actually takes longer to print at 1 hour 56 minutes, but it uses less filament at 58.63 grams. So it doesn't really save on time, but it does save on filament, which I guess is better than nothing. I still like using AI in full when I'm printing really large things, but this is also a cool feature to have. Gone are the days of losing your presets. <laughs> now Creality allows you to save them all to the Creality Cloud. If something does go wrong, or you reinstall your slicer, or upgrade to a new version, all your presets will be saved for future use. Creality has since moved their calibration shapes to a different spot than before. Simply right click on the build plate, select add testing primitive, then select your model. Creality Print 6 also has a refreshed printing interface. Here's what the old version looked like, and here's the new one. There are a few new details I've added. You can now choose to print remotely via the cloud, which could be handy if you're logged in away from home, or you can print on your local network. It shows you the model you're printing, the filament you're using, a webcam preview to make sure your plate is clear, as well as a switch to enable or disable calibration. Once you hit print, it takes you to the device page where you can see the progress of the print. The device tab has also had a refresh, making it a bit easier to read as well as providing a few more details as to what is going on. They seem to have also updated their retraction calibration test. Now it's much larger, but the notches actually align with the millimeter step increments, as in the previous version, they did not. So it wouldn't be a Creality product without its fair share of bugs. So halfway through filming this video, I found that the Relations tab was missing. So remember that great feature I was talking about earlier? Well, now apparently it's gone. I tried uninstalling and reinstalling, restarting the computer, relogging Creality Cloud. Then I came back a day later, hadn't even touched my computer, and bam, it's magically back. The temp tower also seems to be a bit glitchy. When you select your temperature range, it just spits out way more than you need. A workaround is just to allow the program to auto scale, but sometimes it catches extra parts of the model that you don't want. If you wanna read the full release notes for yourself, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching.